I see Mum through the glass door before she sees me. She's sitting up in the hospital bed with the covers over her legs staring out of the big window. Usually Mum ties her hair back but today it's big and frizzy and wild. We open the door. Mum turns to face us. She smiles and stretches out her hand to me. Charlie, she says. Happy birthday. Hi Mum. Mum takes my hand and squeezes it. It's great to see you Charlie. Her hand feels so hot. I squeeze it back and then I shove my hand into my pocket. Great to see you too. I don't want to meet Mum's eyes in case I see a sadness there that I don't want to be true. I look around the room, a metal bed with Mum in it, a red chair with Dad on it, a folded away TV screen, a small white cupboard, dang dangly medical stuff attached to the wall. Where's the baby? I ask quietly. My neck prickles with a horrible, cold, worried feeling. Zara's... Mum starts to answer, but then the door opens and a nurse bustles in backwards, pulling a squeaky trolley with a transparent baby bed on top, a bit like a fish tank. Here's little one, says the nurse brightly. I stand back to let the nurse park the trolley next to Mum's bed. Beautiful little brother you've got there, love, she says to me with a smile. She writes something on the clipboard and goes out again. Come here, Charlie, says Dad, but he's not looking at me. He's gazing into the baby bed and his eyes have gone all melty. Mum's staring dreamily at the baby too. A little pang of jealousy wriggles in my tummy. Trying to smile, I swish the pang away, step closer to the baby bed and peer in. Dara, my brother. Maybe it sounds daft, but I thought I'd kind of recognise him, just see immediately that he's my brother, but he looks not like I expected at all. I think of all those wriggly, giggly babies you see in nappy adverts, and I swallow. Dara doesn't look like that. I stare down at him. He's so small, so impossibly small, and his face is kind of squash looking, and weirdly wrinkly, like his skin is too big for him. He's really still as well, just laying there, asleep, his hands up next to his head, tiny fists curled tight. Only his chest moves, rising and falling very quickly as he breathes. It makes me nervous, his too fast breath. Mum and Dad are watching me. He's beautiful, I say. I smile at them, but I look away again fast, before they spot that my smile is pretend. I feel so bad about it, but I don't think that my new brother actually is beautiful at all. The honest truth is that Dara frightens me. Everything I notice about him is kind of not right. His skin is grey not pink like it should be. His lips are in a tiny O shape, like he's whistling, but I think they're slightly blue. What scares me the most though, is that he has a very thin tube, like a straw from an apple juice carton, going right around his head and into his nose. Dara. I blink down at disappointment of him, still smiling, my pretend smile, and also trying not to cry. He suddenly scrunches up his face. The surprise of his movement makes me jump, and Dad laughs at me. Don't worry, Charlie, he won't bite, smiles Dad, rubbing my shoulder. I shake him off, I don't know why, and Dad looks a bit hurt. Why don't you sit down, Charlie, and you can give your brother a cuddle, says Mum. As if he hates the idea too, the baby starts to cry. I stare into his toothless little mouth and I realise what he reminds me of. Dara's like a baby bird. Just hatched, before it has feathers, or fluff, or open eyes. I shudder, then quick check quickly to see if Mum and Dad have noticed my reaction, but they're not looking at me now. They're too busy seizing the baby. His cry fills the room, a horrible thin squawk, bird-like too. I want to cover my ears, but I know that's babyish, not the right thing to do at all, so I just bite hard on my lip and look out over the window. We're high up in the hospital tower and all I see is blue. Sit down then, Dad says to me, a bit impatient. He's holding the baby, who looks smaller than ever in Dad's big arms. So small, so fragile. Dara stops crying and opens his eyes. They're dark and starey. Can you see? I ask as I sit on the red chair. Neither Mum nor Dad answer me. They're both trying to sort out the nose tube and the little plastic thing in Dara's hand, which has a tube as well. The red chair plastic pinches my bare legs as I wriggle. I pull at my shorts, trying to get comfy. Dara starts crying again. The noise makes me feel all hot and bothered. Time for a cuddle with Charlie. That'll cheer you up, says Dad to the baby. I feel a bit panicky. What if it doesn't cheer him up? Hang on, Dad, I mumble. But Dad's not listening to me. He's listening to Mum. He's fussing about trying to find Dad's phone to take a picture, but Dad's lost it, as usual, and Dara's crying harder than ever, and then he stops crying, really suddenly, with a little gulp, and I notice a big cloud of worry across Dad's face, and he and Mum both go utterly quiet and freeze. I know what they're thinking, because I'm thinking it too. Has the baby stopped breathing? Is he okay? Dara cries again, and they smile at each other, relieved. They don't smile at me. I just sit on the horrible, pinchy chair, and I feel so invisible it makes me sad. Then it makes me cross. 
suddenly I want to scream at them. I'm here too, you know. I was scared too, you know. But I don't scream. I just glare at them. All my jumbled feelings swirling about inside me. They don't notice. Mum's getting the phone ready to take a picture. Dad gets the crying baby ready to have his first cuddle with me. And as Dad lowers Dara towards my arms, something just snaps in me. No, I say. It comes out louder than I meant it to. And I stand up fast, nearly knocking Dara out of my dad's arms. Charlie, what are you doing? Says Mum, shocked. She drops the phone and it clatters onto the hard floor and flashes, taking a picture of nothing all by itself. I start to back away from them, towards the door. At that exact moment, the door swings open again, but this time it's not the friendly nurse, it's the doctor, and she's not smiling. <laughs>